I, I didn't know what was going to happen, sir, uh, that day when we met. Um, I honestly did, and I really appreciate you and the other supervisors for this opportunity. Uh, I, I'm really overwhelmed with it, quite frankly. It's not something I expected a, a year ago. Um, I was very happy in South Carolina, but I'm going to be much, 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 much happier in this context, and I'll explain why. Um, first of all, you've been giving me a hard time for a year about football. <laughs> and I don't have to worry about that anymore because I'm here. <laughs> and I, I'm really excited uh, to be part of this community. My wife, Kim, and I are really excited. I know we've enjoyed, uh, we went up to Shreveport, um, you know, yesterday. If I'm, the days are blurring, day before, or within the last 48 hours, okay? <laughs> and uh, really enjoyed it, and then uh, walked around and saw this beautiful community. But what I'm really most excited about, I met students here who really are amazing. And for me, this uh, position is all about what can we do to help students and get people access and opportunity in higher education. I have a tremendous passion for that. That's really in my DNA. How do we help people? Regardless of their background, we find the money, we get you here, and we give you an opportunity to live your dream. And I think there's no better place in the United States to come find your dream and make it happen than right here at LSU. I'm excited about being a part of the system. We have am amazing opportunities, in my opinion, from a developmental perspective, from two-year colleges all the way through medical education and PhD education. And I hope that we can support it and make it really, uh, I know it's good now, but I know your expectation is we're gonna be better in some years. And so I, I promise you, that's where we're headed. We're gonna keep going up. I, I would be remiss if I didn't say we are experiencing some challenges at this institution. I am ready to work with each of you to make sure that those are dealt with directly and that students are taken care of and this community feels like a safe place where they can come study and be the best that they can be as part of the LSU community. I will not uh, belabor my remarks. I tend to be short in what I say, but I just want you to know how grateful I am for the opportunity and the effort that I'm gonna give you is gonna be like a true point guard. <laughs> I, I'm not gonna give up. If I can't make it happen, I'm gonna pass it to the person who can make the shot. And if the person's on the floor who can't make the shot, I'm gonna knock it down. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate you. Dr. question. Yes, sir. How long will you be here? Just like uh, one year, five years, 10 years? Probably you mean in long. this trip or in my career? I will be here. I answer as, that 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> My intention is to be here as long as you have me. Now, they have a lot to say about it. Um, point of fact is uh, I have to perform. And if I perform well, I hope to be here. Uh, I, I might look like I'm about 20 years old, but I'm a little older than that. And uh, I hope that this would be a place where I would end my career in such a way that you'd be proud. And so it's not my intention to be anywhere else than right here in Baton Rouge and, and broadly in the state of Louisiana. New strategic plan? Was that what I was understanding? All well, we, we had some conversations during the interview process about the strategic plan and where it is right now. And there are a lot of ways to do strategic planning. I, I think that there's an opportunity for us to delineate some common goals that would go across the system <laughs> and to then uh, move forward in uniform fashion to achieve those. And so I think we have an opportunity to do that. I'd like to work with my colleagues to figure out if, that, if this is the best time. We're in the middle of a capital campaign. You generally align those together, but we'll have some conversations and look at it and see if that's the right direction. All right, we're gonna pass the mic so we can hear it on Zoom. So just raise your hand, I'll come, come to you. And please introduce yourself so uh, Dr. Tate knows. Get to meet some of the local meetings. Dr. Tate, uh, Johnston Von Springer, Channel 2 here in Baton Rouge. Can you, um, kind of surmise in your opinion how LSU has handled um, fallout from the Hush Blackwell report. Do you find it um, satisfactory to this point? And as it relates to Title IX, what is gonna be your first um, step implementation um, to move the university forward? Well, I'll start with your second question because that's the better one for me. Um, the reality is um, I think that we need to have and be a model for the rest of the United States of America and how to handle Title IX. If you think that this is the only institution in this country that is dealing with this matter, that is not, um, unfortunately, the case. And I think that we have an opportunity to design and build a trauma-focused approach where if a victim comes forward, that we, we recognize that they have been traumatized in some form or fashion, and then we work with them in the context of that trauma to make sure that they are taken care of. 
And I think that deals with the first part of your question. So in the end, in looking at the report, our end game has to be a trauma-focused approach to dealing with sexual harassment and sexual assault, and ultimately uh, an adjudication process that is quick and aligned with the federal guidelines in terms of the time frame and having the capacity to do that. And then if a person is found uh, guilty of that, uh, eliminating them or removing them from our campus as soon as possible. Uh, Dr. Tate, Lester Dewey with Channel 9. What's your biggest challenge facing you here at LSU? Biggest challenge today uh, is getting to know you. I mean, in, in the end, what, what I have to do very quickly is to come to understand what the people of the state of Louisiana want, what my colleagues who are going to be uh, my accountability system, what they aspire, what the faculty and staff and students de desire. And I've got to do that pretty quickly, so I've got to be a quick study come to understand the needs and the desires of the folks here, and then organize us in, in, in a way that we might be able to attain the goals related to what the community wants to, wants to be in the future. It's about dreaming, and I want to hear what the dreams are. Thank you. All right, President Tate, uh, Brooks Scavino from The Advocate here in town. Um, you mentioned this, this meeting that you, you got to be here for the football game. It was part of your interview there. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about that meeting, how you came to be here? And you mean the, the meeting I came to get my butt kicked by <laughs> LSU? That's I'm a sports writer. I covered about. that game oh, as well, okay. so I won't ask you about yeah, that. Yeah, so, so uh, it wasn't part of the interview process. Uh, I literally was here as part of the team uh, coming from the University of South Carolina. I was here with my president, who um, has been a great, great leader for me, uh, Bob Caslin, and some other uh, members of our uh, leadership team. We were invited to go uh, meet with the governor. They are both West Point graduates, and, and you know many folks know who my president is there. Um, he was he was the he headed that organization, and uh, we went over and just you know in the middle of COVID sat in a tent and had a, a had a meal and talked a little trash about football. Uh, I came up on the short end of that one, and uh, the rest is history. Um, I, I did not communicate in, in case folks are wondering with these folks until the search process started when I heard from a search firm, Parker, and said that I had been nominated for the position. That's how this works. And uh, I, th I thought, wow, I've been nominated for a really great job. And you m you've heard some of the remarks probably through the interview process and the rest is how it unfolded. Hey, uh, JC Canicosa, Louisiana Illuminator. Um, so this school year started with um, LSU renaming one of their libraries over, um, from a uh, old official who supported segregationist policies to this semester opening an African-American <laughs> studies department. Um, where do you see LSU now in terms of its progress with racial justice, and where do you feel like it still has to go? Well, if I have discerned anything from the folks that I've been meeting with over the last uh, couple of days is that they're never satisfied with where we are and they always want to get better. Um, that's what draws me here as well. And so I would imagine all the progress that has been made on that front is viewed as uh, the starting point for achieving what uh, the community desires, and that is an inclusive environment where people feel wanted and respected and part of the community. Brooks Covina again, advocate. Yeah, I mean, again, um, you, you were mentioning the, uh, the a trauma focused approach. Uh, could you expand on what you mean by that and what 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 um, would be in place with that kind of approach instead? Well, you know, one of the challenges when we when we frame something in a legal way like Title IX, which morphed out uh, really uh, the Fourteenth Amendment, equal protection under the law. I'm going to be careful because I'm standing here next to my wife, who's a lawyer, and she'll correct me. But <laughs> but. When, when you start from a legal framework, generally speaking, when you go to court, you have to prove that you, you, you prove your point. You litigate it, if you will. And so the assumption is um, that you know, nothing's happened, and, uh, or depending on the way it's set up, that you're innocent until proven guilty, that kind of environment. But here I come to you, and I tell you I've been traumatized, and you put on top of me that legal framework where I have to prove it to you as opposed to a public health approach, where you might come in to me and tell me this has happened, and I, and I believe you, and I take you in, and then I nurture you, and I help you, and I help guide you through a process that might ultimately lead to something dealing with uh, litigious activity, if you will. But the initial beginning point is, 
I'm going to take care of you because you're part of my family. And, and if that doesn't happen on the front end, it's a complete fail. And so what I'm saying is that that's what we have to do, and that's the way we have to model our behavior. And, and I'm sure that any commission or group that gets together to think about this is going to start with that because that's the best practice. All right, we have one on this side, then we're going to go to Channel 2, and then Mark Ballard at the Advocate. Uh, Nick Fruin with the Rebellion on Campus. Um, so the committee moved to allow applications to be accepted past the original deadline on April 21st, and that's when yours was accepted the weekend after. Was there a reason that your application was late? You want me to address that? You want me to address yeah, that? excuse me, I'll sure. address that. Sure. Uh, James Williams, I, I chaired the search committee. Um, I, I, there was no motion to extend the deadline. I think we made it clear both the day that we met, I think it was a Wednesday, the beginning of the process and thereafter, that because we posted the job and the way we posted it to the world was open until filled, we couldn't then, we felt, and this was best practices from the search firm, after the fact, then have a cutoff. We thought that a practical cutoff would be once we started interviews, mm -hmm. because even though they're still open, once we interview candidates and those are over, there's no opportunity for anybody to get in and become vetted. So um, the Wednesday when I think the search committee met, <laughs> we considered whatever applications were in at that point, but you may remember if you covered that meeting, we explicitly asked and said during that meeting that we would continue to receive applications up until the interview date. And so uh, Dr. Tates was one of those that, that we received after that Wednesday meeting. So, sorry about that. Dr. Tate, a follow-up to that before uh, I get to my question. Obviously, later that week was when your application came in. Was there a reason you personally um, waited that late in between when the first applicants were publicly revealed. Did you talk to anybody from LSU or was there, was it personal mulling of the decision to apply that your application came late? Right, so, you know, I'm gonna be direct and tell you, hey, I love South Carolina. I know I, I love you all too, but um, I really, really enjoy my time there. The people have been great to me. It's a wonderful place. And uh, it was a very hard decision for me um, personally um, ultimately, uh, I made the decision, obviously, to apply. And then once you apply, you know, you begin to know the people and get a sense of what you're going to experience here as a part of the community. And we were drawn to that or, over time because at any time you can withdraw. Um, obviously, each day and each moment, I, I, I just became closer to the group here. And I feel like we made the right decision. And ultimately, um, it's played out in a way that I can be part of the community for a longer period. And then my question I had for you, I guess a moment of reflection, obviously today a historic move for LSU, um, for the university, you are the first African-American president. You will also be the first African-American president in all of the Southeastern Conf Conference. Excuse me, can you just reflect on that milestone personally for a moment maybe? Yeah, I, as I told the committee, um, my, um, my grandfather grew up in Oxford, Mississippi. That's the SEC town. My grandmother's from the Mississippi Delta. Uh, my other side of my family is from Tennessee and Kentucky. It's all SEC country. Um, quite frankly, uh, I didn't think this day would come. And I had a conversation with a colleague a few years ago and asked the question, would it ever be possible um, that actually an African-American would be president in the SEC? Um, my colleague told me he thought it would be possible. Y'all made it possible. And so um, I'm really grateful for it as I reflect historically in my own personal journey. Uh, it's a huge moment for me uh, individually just being a president, period. But it's, this part of history um, to me is very special. It also means that I, I have to absolutely be outstanding because um, they're going to hold me accountable. So what I would like you to say in X number of years, because you asked me how long I'm going to be here, is that not that the guy was just an African-American president, but he did a daggone good job, and we're thankful he came. Actually, I had another question, but I want to follow up on that. There's a, a, a committee on campus that is going through the campus uh, trying to identify all the segregationists and Confederate names, and it will likely be a very uh, controversial effort to remove those names from the campus. Is this something that's going to continue under your watch? I understand that that committee is working very hard. And I see no reason why, I will let somebody else answer, but for, for my take, I wouldn't see why they would stop because I've arrived. It seems like the, the, mo the, tr the train is rolling and they're gonna historicize and contextualize uh, these uh, artifacts on campus and the various buildings and provide us a report. And 
I think we have to look at that report as a, as a community and assess where we are with those names. Uh, would that include the Tigers, which is a uh, Confederate unit? Oh, well, I haven't seen the information and data, no. sir, so it hasn't been contextualized. I don't have a report. So I would be speculating on what they're going to say. I understand there's some outstanding historians on there and that I expect the empirical evidence to be really very clear. But, but that said, there's history and then there's the decision. No decision has been made. And so what we're going to get is a report that tells us the history of the different names. And then there has to be a decision. Wait, my initial question was, when are you actually going to be coming? Here's it. Oh, I believe it's July 2nd. July 2nd? Yes. Has there been contracts? Yes. Actually, I'm still, well, I'll let you talk because you're the chair, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I have authority to negotiate with him per, per the, per the uh, board resolution, and we have some um, general concepts. Uh, we'll, I, I don't think we're going to have a problem with the, the contract, uh, if that's your question. Well, no. If the contract's not finished yet? No, the contract is not generally finished. Generally, what will you be paid? Winston? We, we haven't finalized the contract. One last question from Jason. Um, hey, uh, have you been following um, anything going on with bills in the uh, Louisiana legislature lately? And um, if so, are there any, and especially in regards to um, Title IX reporting, that you support or have any comment on? Well, up until a couple of days ago, I was following all the bills that were in South Carolina. <laughs> and uh, I can tell you what's there, and we're going to get a ton of money, and I'm walking away from. But uh, I, 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 don't, I haven't followed the bills here in Louisiana. I'm sure I'll be briefed um, very carefully about those bills in short order. Thank you. All right, thank you, Dr. Tate. Do you have any closing remarks? Uh, just I look forward to working with you all. And uh, for those of you in the press, the one thing you have to get used to, and I hope you appreciate it, is I'm pretty direct and not politically correct. So feel free to ask what you need to ask. I want to be a transparent individual here for you and just lay it on the line. You write it, and um, I'll, I'll make sure you get the absolute truth in what I'm saying. Appreciate y'all. Go Tigers! Go Tigers! Oh, thank, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>